Hi, I'm Rob, and in this Gems of War video, I'm going to show you the team I'm going to use for this raid boss event versus Webbed Sitharask, the Gargantua of Darkness, apparently. Anyway, you must use the Event Captain Dragon Commander in this team, absolutely essential. Gives you times to magic, which is basically double damage, and earns times to score. So, absolutely essential to use this troop in this event, help out your guild, get more points, and just do extra damage. Very nice indeed. To get her, you're going to go to the shop and make sure you grab at least Tier 1 and Tier 2. Tier 1, you get the Potion of Enchantment. Enchant all allies at the start of battle for this event only. And you also grab some more handy stuff like Raid Boss Sigils and more troops at the same time. Tier 2 is where you grab that essential troop, the Dragon Commander. She deals magic-based damage to an enemy. And if they're a boss, deal 3 to 5 times damage based on your ascensions. Then creates 5 yellow gems. But remember about that times two magic. Whatever damage it says you're doing on the screen, double that, because that is what she's going to be doing to a normal enemy. So in my case, 106, and that is really, really cool. God Slayer, third trait, may come in useful. Hope not, though, because that means we've lost the troop because she's in second place in our team, which I'll show in a minute. But yeah, get those traits anyway. But if you can't, it's not absolutely essential. Tier 3 is a very good weapon, the King Crusher. You get that as well as more Raid Boss Sigils, more Legendary Ingots and more Troops. Like it, explodes Magic Plus 1 Blue Gems, gives a random status effect to all Swords Edge allies and has the Summon. A explodey summony weapon, I do like it. Do you prefer to buy this weapon from here using gems rather than diamonds from the Soul Forge? Gems are much easier to come across in this game than diamonds, so get it from here. And at the same time, you're gaining more Raid Boss Sigils, giving you a better score in the event at the same time. You can go further, of course, if you want to get your Dragon Commander to Mythic, you're either going to have to buy a whole bunch of tiers from here, or use some blue Ascension Orbs to get her to Mythic. Right, on to the team itself. Going to go for Flail of Guard, Dragon Commander, of course, Ulf Harrigan, and Sir Quentin Hadley. Sir Quentin Hadley... All Knight allies start with 50% mana. That's going to be the whole team, so a nice 50% start for everybody, apart from the top troop, who is not going to be a Knight, but we're still going to get a 50% start, as I'll show in a second. And the spell is good too. Converts purple gems to yellow and green gems to skulls, then deals magic plus two damage to two random enemies. So if this gets charged up quickly, we can wipe out two enemies really quickly in those early stages. Failing that, we can hit them with Ulf Harrigan. Does magic plus three true damage to three random enemies. And if an enemy is wounded, deal 10 extra damage. So that is really, really good. And then summon Ulf's mascot. So it has all that damage and a summon as well. Very nice indeed. Dragon Commander. We know about her. Whatever damage I said on the screen, double that. Because that is the amount you're actually going to be doing to a normal enemy. So she's good versus bosses and normal troops. That is why she's in second place. But she also creates five yellow lightning gems. And this is where the weapon comes handy, basically on a double benefit. The Flail of Guard uses yellow. So basically, if those yellow gems match, it's going to help charge up the weapon. But if it doesn't do that, then we can explode gems anyway. And by exploding gems, you're going to be taking out those lightning gems, which is still going to have the effect of lightning gems. Therefore, getting a kind of side benefit out of those lightning gems anyway. And it also grants a random status effect to all Swords Edge allies, then summons a Swords Edge troop. So, yeah, really, really nice. So when we cast that, that is going to give status effects to all our team, which is really, really cool, as well as explode a load of stuff, charging everybody up. I mean, Geomancer class for this, but it is optional. You can change to Archer class if you prefer, but I really like a Geomancer for this because we are still going to get a 50% star in mana. All constructs start with 50% mana, but we also get reduced damage from skulls by 50%. As well as that, in the talent trees, we can have impact, inflict stun when enemies deal skull damage to me. Now, this combines really, really well with rock solid. Gain a barrier when matching brown gems, which we'll be doing during the game for our Quentin Hadley and our Ulf Harrigan. So we get a barrier when we do that. And then if we get hit by a skull, it's not going to do anything. All it's going to do is remove our barrier and then stun the enemy so if we're against enemies that have dangerous traits it's going to take those traits away and make them less dangerous and uh, we can have anti-magic sphere at the same time which is nice 
Stone Mastery, we'll have that as well, I think. Yes, best. Oh, no, we'll have um, Enchant, actually, when matching Green Gem. That's potentially... Oh, no, we don't match Green, do we? Uh, but we might do Flukily. Nah, we'll have the guaranteed extra brown. And a Fortitude. Very nice indeed. And the other thing about the weapon, while I think about it, which is really useful, is in the upgrades, if you have it on level 7, you get shielding, a barrier myself. So every time, single time you cast this, you're going to get a barrier anyway. And another barrier when we collect brown. So really nice, but as I said, there is a option for this. You could go Archer class, I suppose. That's very good as well. Can't go far wrong with that. Uh, going to get a 50% start with mana again. 15% chance for skull damage to be lethal. That could be really handy on those higher levels against those high level opponents when that comes in. And remember, we are converting some gems to skulls with Sir Quentin Hadley later on as well. And you can have stuff like Root Trap as well at the start, which is very nice. And a chance of an extra summon. So yeah, absolutely, Archer Class is a second viable option. But I'm going to start with this in Geomancer Class. Banner for this, I'm going to go for the Tinker Banner. Plus two red, plus one yellow, minus one green. All right, let's dive in then and take a look at a few battles. Lower level ones at first, we'll just do a few of these and then we'll jump forward and show some more difficult ones. So everybody's nearly up straight away, let's just get that weapon rocking and rolling. Quentin Hadley's ready, he's going to kill two troops straight away, go three times and nicer for this if you can. Let's take that hit there and get them on their way. Next stage. Now let's do this, cast that, explode them gems, really fast team this, that combination of the 50% start, the potion of enchantment, really really cool, Ulf Harrigan finishes off, these early stages are going to be an absolute stroll through the woods, being careful of doo-doos, do not want to step in doo-doos, there we go, let's, ah, there you go, okay, we'll do it that way then. Super fast at the beginning. Blitz through these early levels. Giant spider is in our way. If you get a chance to kill that Val Raven straight away, absolutely do so. When you kill one of them, you get extra sigils. That's why it's got the sigil thing around its neck. Get two of them sigils. Make sure you get it first. There you go. Bingo, bango, job done. Explode those gems. Ulf's up. He says, see you later, everyone. In a hail of arrows, probably. So it looks like that's what he does. I think. Yeah. Howling volley. So he even shouts at you when he fires them um, arrows into the air. See, if you had any sense and you, you heard him howling, you'd start ducking or put your shield above your head or something dodging that damage so yeah, yeah as you can see these early stages mega fast mega straightforward let's do that first because then we can cast Ulf as I said three times nicer for these early stages boost up the power of your team and wipe through really quickly all right Stage 5, Webbed Sitharask has started to appear. Let's see what this Webbed Malarkey is all about. No doubt he's going to web our team. Oh no, kill an enemy, then create 6 web gems. Again, this is really handy by the way this explodes gems, because when those web gems appear, we can actually uh, use them against the enemy. Webbed Sitharask will be immune to them, because immune to all status effects, but yeah, certainly will have an effect on the other team quite often. There he is, playing his invisible violin. Grab that anyway. Let's bash them around a bunt. That's going to get our old Harrigan up. Oh, they got summoned. Let's get the old Dragon Commander onto them. Bash. See ya. I've jumped forward a bit to some of the later levels, but I've paused on this one because this is literally where this team is really kind of coming into its own because 
We're getting troops like web spinner up quite regularly now, and this does do triple a damage. It starts off low, but as you do more levels, it will get harder and harder, and it will make a significant difference later on. But the uh, benefits to the way this team works becomes more apparent here, as I just said, because uh, Geomancer class, we get impact as well as a barrier on a, a brown match. This is really, really important. Impact inflicts stun when enemies deal skull damage to me, so it takes away their traits. So the benefit of having this combined with rock solid means we just get a brown match to get a barrier. And if web spinner should hit us, not only will it do no damage, but it'll permanently stun them until it gets recovered and then do no triple damage. It'll just do the basic damage where, again, we can get a barrier by casting our weapon or by collecting a brown. So really, really cool. Works very well versus these kind of opponents. And we can get rid of them anyway, because that is charged up. You can get rid of Web Spinner straight away if you like. No more threat. Old Paragon. Three lots of damage. And killed the uh, webbed guy. Or gal, whatever it is. I don't know. I think it's a guy. Right, anyway, let's explode these. Let's get that barrier look. We've got that shield going on. Ulf is up. Ulf does loads of damage. They got a summon. It's not going to matter. Quentin Hadley is up next round. Give him a bosh. Skulls everywhere. Take that. Take that. On your bikes. Get on your dangerous electric scooters and terrorise the neighbourhood. Whatever. Alright, let's just do a couple more battles. Very nice and straightforward with this team so far. Absolutely no problems whatsoever there you go there's them sigils in the bag let's get webbed sith a face out of it let's um just do this i suppose i was gonna collect those lightning gems but no need and let's just do a couple more play that invisible violin buddy you know you love it let's explodey gems alf is up let's get rid of the Matey boy at the bottom first. Kaboosh him out of there with the Dragon Slayer. All Farragans up. You're my son. Right, last one. Web to Janet. Well, you can't say no to getting rid of Janet straight away when that happens. Let's finish off with Alf. <laughs> That's straightforward. I know I've got some extra power in this, and if you're a newer player, you're not going to be hitting as hard, but stick on those medals of Noshi if you can to increase your damage. Make sure you take out Webbed Sitharask as quickly as possible with the Dragon Commander, and then use Ulf to your advantage. Explode those gems, taking out the Lightning Gems, gaining mana, etc., and it should be fairly straightforward. But there it is. There's the video. I'm back later with my Underspire team and my epic trial strategy. If you enjoyed it, found it useful or helpful, be really cool if you bash that like and subscribe button. It really does help. And most of all, thanks for watching. Catch you again next time. Bye for now.